good morning. So, we have just uh, woken up after our sleep from night shift. Got this little one here. Hello, darling. So, I'm just gonna take you through what my day looks like um, after I've come back from night shift and what I get up to before I go to my next night shift. So, let's just check in. This is, so we've done three night shifts and fine. I'm trying to do a video here, it's so windy. Um, oh, where was I? Lost, lost my train of thought completely. We've done three night shifts. This is the daytime. It's about three o'clock. It's about 3.30, to be honest. And we've just woken up after a good like six hour sleep. So that's pretty good. I'm just gonna take you through what I get up to in the daytime uh, before we head back. Yeah, the first thing I do is get up and make a coffee because we just need that to start start everything off. So I've made myself a little latte. Here we go, I've attempted a little bit of latte art. It's okay. And then, <laughs> this one waiting by the door. After I finish my coffee, I'll probably take her for a walk. And then after that, we'll probably get back, have some food if, we, uh, if we're hungry. And, oh, what are you doing? You gonna hop up? You gonna hop up? No, you just wanna walk. Okay, all right, let me just get my coffee down and then we'll take her for a walk. She did actually decide to hop up on the couch. Look at her patiently waiting. Gorgeous girl. Yeah, give me a little bit and then we'll go. I think it's time. Is it time? Let's go for a walk. Enjoy that, darling. Yeah. Yeah. So, just outside for our little walk now. Done. So it's actually kind of nice to um to get outside after you've been sleeping for ages and then been in the hospital overnight. I don't know. I find it's always really nice just to get some fresh air and a um and some actual sunlight. It's nice to actually get outside and get some actual air into my lungs. And I don't know, cold Melbourne winter's day can do not too much wrong for me. It's so nice and fresh. So I don't mind. I don't mind it being a little bit chilly. Hey, darling. Anyways, we'll get this walk in and then we'll um, get back home and maybe have some food or um, do some stuff on my laptop. Let's see how we're feeling after. into seven, seven things in a row. Come on, let's get in. So you don't think about the days like a Monday or a Tuesday. It's, I'm actually super hungry, to be honest, so. Mm. Bothered cooking or Uber Eats? Might be an Uber Eats job, I'm not sure. All right, watch this space. Time. For night four of four, I have just um, woken up. We actually, I haven't woken up. What am I saying? Um, no, we actually are just about to get ready um, for our fourth night in our run of seven. Um, feeling okay. Haven't had as much sleep as I have the other nights, but got ourselves a little little coffee that I've whipped up. Um, practicing my latte art. I don't know if you can see that. It's looking okay. I've gone for semi-flower or something tonight, I don't know. But I thought I'd check in just uh, just prior to, um, to heading off. We actually had a pretty good day today. We woke up about three-ish or so, um, took Flame for a walk, which was, which was nice. And then uh, we actually just came back and watched the footy for a bit. I did some, did some admin, did some work um, for my research project. And then, um, yeah, it's come around to pretty much seven. So had a shower and now we're about to head off. So I'm just, um, yeah, just packing some food for the night and making sure I've got all my um, stuff all ready to go. Um, oh, you know what I actually might do? I will 
show you what it's actually like to salary package in real time because here's a it's like a super quick thing um essentially what i what you can do i'll do a full video on like what salary packaging is and how you use it as a doctor but when you work in the public health system you just uh able to get a little bit of money back um or you're able to use a certain portion of your income as pre-tax so i think it's like you you're able to use about nine thousand dollars um of your income for living expenses without getting taxed and then you're able to use about twenty six hundred dollars um, of your income for meals and entertainment uh, without getting taxed so essentially usually your take-home pay is after tax money this money that you get is before tax money and you just don't get taxed on it um, in real time what happens is it gets put from your pay slip into a separate account held by the salary packaging company. And then you spend, I spend money, essentially, I spend like normal money. And then I show them a receipt or I send a photo of the receipt to the, to the app or to the website, and then they reimburse me. So that's the way I do it. You can also do it a different way where you actually get the money uploaded on a card and you just spend that and you don't, there's not two things. You don't spend money and then get reimbursed. You just spend the money. But um, uh, yeah, I just think it's easy to go for the receipt option and um, get reimbursed and I'm not too fussed with that. So yeah, actually that's what I might do. I'll show you what it's actually like to do that. So we've got a receipt. What this means is this is just a receipt from when I went out for brekkie the other day. Um, I'll take a photo of this upload it to the app. Um, I mean, I'm recording on my phone at the moment, so I actually can't show you. Um, but essentially, once that photo gets uploaded, you just input the GST amount, the date, and the amount of the transaction, and then they, you will get reimbursed uh, to your bank account um, pretty much within a day or so, um, if you have enough funds um, allocated. Um, so, yeah, that's the way it works. Um, sometimes I just use my admin time just to catch up on all that, but um, there's not too much sort of paperwork that you have to do for that. Um, the other thing that I want to say is, so we ran out of memory space, that's the reason the recording cut off uh, yesterday, and we were actually pretty under the pump to be honest, so I'm sort of glad I had um, a little bit of rest today, um, just to debrief from um, the, the busy night of, um, yeah, there was a few procedures. I think we did a few catheters. We had a met call for a sick lady, and we, we I did a few catheters. Um, we had a met call for a sick patient, a and a, just a lot of um, reviews for um, patients that had some like you know they they're called UCRs. So I had a lot of UCRs, which is uh, it stands for an urgent clinical review. Um, Essentially, there's three stages of escalation in well, our hospital, for example. The first one is UCRs, which is when the vital signs or clinical concern falls slightly out of the normal range. Um, their heart rate, the heart rate might be a cert, like might be just high. Um, their heart rate might be slightly higher than usual. Their blood pressure might be a little bit lower, but they're not that unwell looking, and they don't fall dramatically outside of the normal range. So it's just a page to the doctor or a word to the doctor to come and review the patient. Um, and it's supposed to be within about um, 30 minutes they're supposed to review. The next escalation is the met call, which is um, a response within five minutes um, is usually uh, expected, if not sooner. Um, and that's when the, the, the clinical concern is elevated, but they haven't arrested. They haven't gone into full-blown arrest. Um, and, uh, you know, the vital signs are more abnormal. So we have like a, a yellow range on our OBS charts where you record all like the heart rate, temperature, respiratory rate, all that stuff. There's a yellow range, um, which is just outside the, the normal range. Um, I'll actually put a picture up um, to make it a little bit easier to grasp 
because I'm just talking about colors and ranges and it doesn't make a lot of sense without seeing the actual chart. But essentially the white range is the normal range of all the um, OBS. The yellow range is the UCR criteria. Um, and then the red range, I think it is, is the, is the met call criteria. So that's when you announce um, a, a met call over the, um, over the tannoy, over the PA system. And there's a few different people who come to that. But um, we'll, do a f uh, we'll do a full video about who comes to a met call and what to do in a met call and how to get better at met calls and code blues as well. Um, I think it's just reps, to be honest. Um, the more met calls, the more UCRs, the more code blues you go to, the better you get. Yeah, it's tricky to um, plan them, you know. I mean, you can get a good structure, but when you're in that stressful situation, it's actually quite hard to, um, you know, think laterally. So putting yourself in more situations like that where you're forced to be under pressure, you're forced to look at the sick patient in front of you and make good, thorough, um, rational clinical decisions Honestly, it's just practice. And you can only do so many um, theoretical, so you can only do so much the theory, you can only do so much theory to prepare yourself for something like that. Um, and at the end of the day, you just need to see more patients, um, which, will, which will come just from being in the hospital. People get sick and that's just a, just a fact of, um, of hospital. Um, people are just sicker than in the community, so. It's all good. You'll see, you'll see patients, and that's that's a good thing um, for you to get more experience and more comfortable being slightly uncomfortable in those situations. But it's uh, what's well, about 7:30 now, so I'm gonna pack some food um, and head into the head into the hospital. Um, we won't do our nightly check-in um, on the drive, um, but we'll check in after handover and after the huddle and we'll just assess what jobs we have to do and everything like that and then go from there. So this is the halfway point essentially. Um, we've got four more nights including this one and it should be getting better because usually things go a bit slow, more slowly on the weekends, things get missed. Um, so during the week most teams are on top of things so usually patients are a little bit more stable but you know, don't want to jinx anything, so we'll see how it is. Ah, see you guys later. All right, ready to head off. Let's let's go get this. Tell you what, jacket is a game changer. It gets super cold overnight, especially in winter. So see your house. All right. Not too many times you see him wearing a set skirt. We have to do a few fluid reviews for the patients. A bit of water on the floor. Um, well, it actually came in handy because one of the patients was actually a little bit overloaded, so I actually got to hear some crackles. Anyways, I'll tell you what we did when we get back inside. But it's almost time for a cup of tea, to be honest. Pretty quiet night to this. Pretty quiet start to night. Time to find a room. Looks like this one is free. So, I'm just gonna pop this stuff down. I always like to grab a room before I start. Them. So a couple things uh, to go through. Um, there's a patient who might pass away. Um, that was actually the same sick patient that I saw last night. So aware of their situation. Um, they've already been seen by the palliative care team. So. We'll just see if she hangs on overnight, um, but if she doesn't and she does indeed pass, then we will need to do a, uh, a death certificate and verify the death as well. So two things that you can actually um, uh, learn about uh, if they do indeed come up tonight, but the, the first thing you need to decide with a death is if it is for a coroner's investigation if the cause of death is suspicious or something and it needs to be investigated further, or um, if it is not for a coroner's and it is an expected death, um, then yeah, then we don't need to fill out extra paperwork um, for that. So 
just see see what happens tonight. In any case, um, if someone dies in hospital, a medical officer actually needs to verify the death. And that's a few different things. You need to listen to the heart for a bit, listen to the lungs for a bit. You need to check their pupils and their response to painful stimulus. Um, and yeah, a few other things as well. Um, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, there's a nice little checklist um, that uh, most hospitals usually have to make it a bit easier um, to, to remember how to do that. Uh, everyone responds a bit differently to death, so it can be hard to remember that off the top of your head in such a situation. But yeah, I've done a few, uh, unfortunately, um, in my time since I started working, so um, yeah, we'll just see what, what happens, but just need to make the patient as comfortable as possible. Um, the other thing we have to do is a few fluid reviews um, for patients that have been receiving um, fluid therapy. Need to make sure that they're not getting too much or too little. That's it for the moment for my general surgery patients and we'll just have to wait and see what happens with the other thoracics or vascular patients. So we will just set up. Actually, let's just set up now. Oh, that was really loud. We can work out how we go through it. I might actually do that salary packaging thing now while I have time. All right, so since my head looks so weird, um, I'm gonna play a game tonight with knights. I'm gonna count how many steps I actually do in an entire night shift. Um, oh, just getting a page. BSL 3.8, going to administer. Oral glucose, please order it. Sounds pretty reasonable. So yeah, we're gonna check how many steps we do for the entire night. Let's see how that works. All right. Also, the first time, the first time ever, I think I've actually pulled out my stethoscope. So, I need to do a couple of fluid reviews for a patient. So, put that a look at their chest. Have a listen to it. See if you can hear any weird stuff. I might suggest that fluid overloaded. Now it's gonna be time for a huddle. So I'm just gonna go there, see who's working tonight, and show everyone our faces. See if there's any sick patients. After this, we'll go do some, some of the jobs for tonight, and we'll go from there. So, just gonna do a quick update. Let me just put this here. So, what have we been up to for the shift? Well, let's go from most recent to what we did at the start. So, the most recent thing was we went down to x-ray because sometimes it's a little easier to, um, uh, to do it than to just stay back on the wards. But essentially, what we need to do is the NGT for a patient, and there's a gastric tube, uh, wasn't working so we needed to pull it out and reinsert a new one and whenever you reinsert a new one you need to confirm the position on a chest x-ray and you pretty much see the tip of the nasogastric tube is like metal um, and you need to position that so it's below the diaphragm in the in the stomach in the right place and it's most important for this patient because they were going to get some feed through the nasogastric tube, um, through the nasogastric tube into the um, uh, into the stomach, so they can actually get fed. But yeah, the reason for the feeds is that they can get the um, nutrition that you would normally get from food. Um, but for whatever reason, I haven't looked into this patient's history that much. But some people uh, are not able to eat. Anyways, so we had to we had to go confirm the position of the nasogastric tube. I went down to x-ray because it was a little bit easier and we did that, it was in the right place. So that's all good to go and get started on for the feeding again. Um, what have we done before? We had a look at a couple of ECGs to make sure patients um, were okay. They had a little bit of a high heart rate. Before that, we had to do a few fluid reviews on some patients. Um, so often surgical patients get a lot of fluids 
but sometimes you can tip them over to much fluid into fluid overload and sometimes they can be a little bit underloaded or where they can be dry and need more fluid given to them. So you essentially just need to work out where they are on that spectrum. Do they need to keep going at the same rate? Do they need more? Do they need less? So did that for a couple of patients. One of those patients was actually a little bit overloaded. He had a, um, that patient had a history of heart failure. So you need to be a bit careful when you're giving these patients fluid because they can very easily tip over to too much fluid in their lungs. So we just had to hold off on that and and luckily they weren't uh, symptomatic, so we didn't need to do anything drastically um, to get the fluid off them at that stage. The other things that we had to do was we're chasing, so we're waiting on a couple of patients to come across from different hospitals. It takes a bit of time, so I'm not sure when they'll actually arrive. Transport is, transport is a hot commodity, especially overnight, so often they will take uh, a few hours before they can actually get in. So we'll just wait and admit those patients when they come in. I think they'll be for surgery at some stage um, tomorrow or this morning because it's, uh, it's about 1 a.m. at the moment. Um, the night's actually going pretty well so far. Um, I just had to uh, pop out to the to the radiology to sort out that chest x-ray thing. But apart from that, we had to give a patient some sugar because they were a little bit hypoglycemic. They had some low blood sugar. The other thing was, yeah, there's this patient who's on a heparin infusion and we have to just adjust the rate to make sure it's in the therapeutic range. So you do a test called an APTT to make sure that it's not too high or not too low. If it's too high, you need to pause it and adjust the rate to slow it down. And if it's too low, then you need to do the opposite. You need to increase the rate uh, to speed it up to make sure it's in the right range. Uh, we needed to do that and they'll, get, they'll be getting a blood test soon around two-ish, two, yeah, around two-ish actually, so not too far away. So we'll just check up on that and then adjust the rate accordingly. Um, apart from that, there's not too much else happening. I'm probably just gonna go back and have a little coffee and um, and relax for a little bit, finish off my research project. Speaking of that, we need to actually document that the chest x-ray was fine. So I said I will, but we will do that now while we're here. It's probably just easier because we set up and talk while we're doing this. It's kind of spooky being in a hospital at these hours. Like for some reason there's a TV going. I don't know if you can see this. Like, what's that about? Why is there a TV just running? Let's go back. We'll document that stuff and then we'll get out of here. Okay, we'll check in later. But yeah, all's going pretty well so far. We have just finished the night shift. It's about 7.30 uh, Monday morning. We're finishing early because all the teams usually start early. That's what usually happens on a Monday. But I'll fill you in after we last checked in, because I think it was a little bit of a while ago. So what did we get up to? I think the last time we were checking in, we were doing something, to be honest, very hungry right now as well. So we had to uh, go do some fluid assessments on a, patient, on, a, on a couple of patients, which we already did. Actually very hungry, so I am keen for pour some food. I don't know what I'm going to eat, but um, I might actually just stay up for a little bit, get some food in, and then um, hit the hay. The main thing that happened is that the patient that was sick last night, like the night before, um, actually actually passed away um, overnight. So we had to... Um, we had to verify the death and fill out the uh, death certificate. Um, it's always an unfortunate thing that we have to do. Um, but, you know, update the family, get them to come in and see the patient. And yeah, the verification of the death uh, is a thing that the doctor has to do. It essentially involves you, um, you know, listening to the heart, checking the pupils, listening to the lungs, and trying to um, elicit a uh, response from the patient with, um, with voice and, and pain. And I mean, it can seem a little bit um, 
intrusive or a little bit um, cruel or like you are almost like yeah it's it, it's a weird feeling to, to get around but I think the more you do it the easier it gets um, and the, the, well they're not it, it doesn't get easier as such as it as you get better at dealing with it is the is the better answer okay so yeah that's one thing we had to do after that after I verified the death and then sorted out the chest x-ray I really didn't go back to the ward which was nice um, there was a couple of possible uh, admissions that I was waiting on that I never ended up having to do because they didn't come from the different hospitals um, and we actually had a bit of a uh, relaxing night which was which was refreshing uh, ended up being able to watch a bit of TV and hang out with the other um, the other night doctors, um, and I was just finishing off um, yeah some of uh, this research project that I was doing, which was which was good. This is gorgeous. Look at this little sunrise. We'll, uh, we'll get to it in a second, but kind of nice. Just. Um, driving home when everyone's going to work especially on like on like a Monday morning like that's such a busy busy period where everyone is all all ready for the start of the week and now I just get to actually go home and sleep which is which is nice so yeah the night the night was actually was actually pretty pretty good and you know it's not always going to be like this so appreciate that it can get quite busy um, but when you do have some quiet nights just enjoy it that's that's fine so what are we gonna do today well I'm gonna go get some food and well, so now after we finish I'm gonna get some food um, I'm thinking bagel but I'm not not entirely sure we do have some stuff at home that I might just make instead um, that probably I should I should do that because it's already like it's already there, um, and we are probably going to get some food tonight. But uh, I just I just feel quite hungry right now. So uh, this research and send it through, and then um, yeah, that's it pretty much. I'll probably just hit hit the bed and uh, and have a bit of a rest. So yeah, all in all, we're four shifts down. We've got three to go. We're not too far away, which is good and it's been so far so good on nights i mean you just get better and better and at dealing with the time that you work at but also dealing with the uh, different types of issues that arise you become much more of a problem solver than a uh, delegator or a um, like you have to think like there's there's a couple of questions to be honest, which you have to go over um, in nights. Uh, if there's a problem that you're not comfortable with dealing with, or you're not sure how to deal with it, then you really need to think: Do I need to? Uh, is is this an is this such an urgent problem that I need to call someone who's asleep, such as like a registrar or a consultant, or? Is there anyone else at the hospital that could potentially help me with this? Or can I just sort it out myself if I look up a guideline or if I look up some electronic resources or something like that? Um, so you've got to stratify, you've got to triage what you need to do. Um, so, oh, there's like three dogs back there. That was cute. Um, yeah, but like I'm, I'm just rambling. But you essentially um, need to work out how urgent something is um, overnight, and you don't, you shouldn't never, like you, you shouldn't never contact someone. But you should consider: is this going to change your management if I contact that person? Is there anyone else who's awake who can help me out? How urgent is this? should should you wake them up and when should you wake them up and 
yeah, it's it can be a little bit of a tricky thing. I was talking to the, one of the registrars about it last night, but because because it, it is a tricky thing to learn how to how to do and when you should do this and when you shouldn't do that, and yeah, I think you will eventually get better but um it takes a bit of practice so anyways i'm probably not making too much sense and i'm just rambling because i'm hypoglycemic and fatigued um so don't take everything i say as gospel i'm just gonna run through a semi red light just there because uh, i'm not stopping and yeah we're gonna get some rest I'll uh, I'll see you guys later on after I um, after I eat and um, and recuperate. All right, catch ya.